and welcome flip clock fans you're looking at a Panasonic RC6003 and I want to shout out to one of our newest members at flip clock fans David Vismara I hope I'm saying that right he's asked what kind of light do we use for the 6003 so we're going to talk about that it's not a typical neon that you've seen before those orange neon glow but before we do that I want to say hey stop if you're going to work on these clocks, you got to know it's very dangerous. This is alternating current, and it could kill you. I'm not advising you to do this. Now, this light is on, this clock is on, and I'm testing the points where the leads go into the circuit board. You see it says 4.2 volts. Well, you can't measure it that way. I'm going to show you why later, because that light's already burning. Uh, you'll have to have a non-working light or take that light out to get a good test of how much voltage is going there. Right there by that teal thing, there's one of the leads, and the other lead is down by the dial. I'll show you a little closer where those are and hopefully how to get those out correctly. Before we start, the speaker. If you're working on your clock, uh, I've made a New Year's resolution. Before I work on any clock, I'm going to cover that clock uh, speaker. They do get damaged. So what I've done is just taken a piece of, it's actually cardboard. Now you see the screws and stuff can get down in on the back side, so I'll probably cover that up with tape. Because there's a magnet on that speaker and it wants to draw screws in there. Okay, so see our light. This one's working just fine. A lot of people want a bright light on that, and it's really not the way it was intended to be. It was a low-level light so that you could see the clock at night. Um, some people want to put LEDs in there and make it real bright. I just don't, I just don't dig that. Now, see, that's, that's a tuner cord. And if you're working with a soldering iron near that, you're likely to touch that and it will break quickly. Uh, no, no room for error there. So you could take the circuit board off or you can work with it the way it is. We're going to work with it the way it is. It's a little dangerous. So if you look here, there's one of the leads right there. And the other one is over here. There's a teal uh, device. You see that? Not the, not the blue capacitors but the teal device there right down there is the second lead a lot of times people ask you know what's positive what's negative well this isn't direct current this is alternating current at this point and it does not matter now you couldn't put an led into that because it is alternating current well you could but um it's not going to work right you need to put a incandescent bulb in there and we're going to show you uh, how much current that is the points where that bulb comes in is on the back side, is right here. Now there's the tune. See how close that is? Real risky. When I'm doing that, I'm probably not going to show it on camera because I don't want to. I don't want you guys to see me mess up my clock. And someone asked about those tweezers one time. Yes, those are my wife's tweezers. They're good tweezers. She did not miss them. I have no problem working with pink tweezers. These work good. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a hold of that wire with my wife's tweezers. They're actually mine now. I'm going to get a hold of that wire, get some pressure on it, a kind of a pull as I hit the lump of solder I showed you with my soldering iron. Again, this uh, you can mess some things up. You, you might want to take a picture of your circuit board before you start messing with it. You actually should because if you start crossing lines and messing things up, your, uh, your clock could get really badly messed up. So I've done this off camera and was able to touch that, not mess anything up. Now we're going to go to the second lead here. There's another lump of solder, and this is original from the factory. It's an original bulb. No one's ever messed with it. There's some wax here. I'm not sure why they put that on there. Maybe it's an insulator. I don't know. But we'll touch that with our soldering iron. This time I'm going to use my fingers because I can reach it easier. I'll be able to apply a slight pull, and that will. That will allow me to release that without getting the circuit board too hot. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll do this on camera. Now the soldering iron's got some garbage on it, so I'm off camera here. I'm just going to clean that tip, dip it down to, to a tip cleaner. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to just try to get that warmed up a little bit, not to overheat the board, mess up any components there. So we get that warmed up. And I can tell that's the right area because I could feel the wire release. And that's the other lead. 
Now in this case, I'm not going to pull the bulb out because that bulb's working. After I get done messing around here, I'm going to go ahead and put those back in. Now at this point, once I power on, I can stick my testers in there on both sides. And we're going to get a better read of what the actual voltage going to the light is. And that's going to help us choose what kind of bulb to get. There are options. You have options when you're doing this. You don't have to stick with what I'm going to show you. Even though what I'm going to show you, I think, is closest to what is original in the clock. So we've got the clock powered on. We'll go ahead and, and get, try to get a good read here. Again, I don't recommend you guys do this. Uh, working with a clock that's powered on, you could damage the clock or damage yourself. Here we go, we're looking at about 9.8. So the voltage going to your light on the RC6003 is right close to 10 volts. Now for this application, we're going to use this bulb. So it's about the right size, very similar in size. And it, it is an incandescent lamp, 12 volt, 50 milliamp. It's about a 5.5 .5 diameter. It says the hours is 10,000 hours, but see, you're going to underpower this bulb, so it's not going to be getting its full power. And that way the bulb will actually last longer. And they usually last longer than what they're ready for anyway. So there you can see, it gives a very similar glow. And it's not as bright as it would be if you did power it with 12 volts. But it was purposefully underpowered to give a, a light glow for someone who's going to be looking at it with blurry eyes when they wake up. And what I've got here is a bulb that looks exactly the same, it's the same size, but it's actually a 6 volt bulb. So we're going to overpower this bulb and you can, you'll see the difference here. Quite a big difference. So you see you can get a lighter light on your clock if you get closer to 10 volts. I wouldn't put a 6 volt in there. It just burn it would burn out fairly quickly. They're, they're the same size and everything. I've always got to be careful when I put them back in the bag so I don't put them in the wrong place. I get this from Miniatronics. The link will be in the description. You can get them in other places and you can get other kind of lamps too, other kind of bulbs as long as they're about the same size. Well, there it is, the Panasonic RC6003. I hope this helps someone. Thanks for taking the time.